Sarah, Cynthia, Sylvia, Stout would not take the garbage out. She'd wash the dishes and scrub the pans, cook the yams and spice the hams, and though her parents would scream and shout, she simply would not take the garbage out. And so it piled up to the ceilings, coffee grounds, potato peelings, brown bananas and rotten peas, chunks of sour cottage cheese. It filled the can, it covered the floor, it cracked the windows and blocked the door with bacon rinds and chicken bones, drippy ends of ice cream cones, prune pits, peach pits, orange peel, gloppy glumps of cold oatmeal, pizza crust and withered greens, soggy beans and tangerines, crusts of blackburn butter toast, grisly bits of beefy roast. The garbage rolled on down the hall. It raised the roof. It broke the walls. I mean, greasy napkins, cookie crumbs, blobs of gooey bubble gum, cellophane from old bologna, rubbery blubbery macaroni, peanut butter cake and dry curdled milk and crust of pie, rotting melon, slide up mustard and shelf mixed with lemon custard, cold french fries and rancid meat, yellow lumps of cream of wheat. <sighs> At last, the garbage reached so high that finally it touched the sky and None of her friends would come to play, and all the neighbors moved away, and finally Sarah Cynthia Stout said, Okay, I'll take the garbage out. But then, of course, it was too late. The garbage reached across the state from New York to the Golden Gate. And there in the garbage she did hate to Sarah met an awful fate that I cannot right now relate because the hour is much too late. But children remember Sarah Stout and all.